Welcome to um, this last taster session that we're running in this Women in Leadership um, series. So we're delighted you could um, join us today. So let's let me just share who we've got on the session today. So I'm all a power. Um, so I've been interested in the area of women in leadership since um, I specialised in diversity as part of my MBA quite a long time ago now. But I specifically focus on this area and I've been doing that for the last eight or nine years. And that includes designing and delivering women in leadership programmes. Um, and I'm joined by um, Pauline Muldoon, who um, she looks after our senior women's forum. That's for women looking to progress into those C-suite roles. So she designs and delivers that. She's also a very experienced executive coach and mentor. So she will be sharing a lot of her tips and uh, points around mentoring in this session. And then I'm delighted that we've got Kirsten Cole joining us, um, the sales director from our teams. And Kirsten's going to be sharing some of her um, direct experiences around mentoring. So that's who we've got on the panel today. So we hope these sessions um, are providing you with insights and development actions. Uh, we did send out a worksheet. I think Mead is going to post that in the chat as well. So hopefully that will be useful for you. And we'll take some of the points that we've been talking about today are in that worksheet. Uh, we're on this webinar for, uh, format because we usually have quite a large take up. So um, limits interactivity a little, but please do feel free to use the chat. We're going to have a couple of polls. Um, so we'll be asking you to do that. And we're aiming to complete within about 50 minutes so we can leave enough time for questions um, and a refresh probably before your next uh, meeting. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us after this session, you can contact us on that email address. OK, so this session today is focused on what mentoring and sponsorship mean. So it's our LH8 point of view on the difference. We're going to look at how to select your mentor and some of the considerations if you're thinking about being mentored um, and thinking about how you get that successful mentor relationship. And then we'll also consider being a mentor, what to think about. And as I say, at the end, we're going to share some of our personal mentoring insights and experience. So if you attended the first um, session that I ran um, all those weeks ago, you might remember that I talked about some of the headwinds relating to networking for women. And one of the headwinds for women is that they are under mentored and sponsored. So too few women are reaching the top of the, their organisations. And a big reason is that they're not getting the high stakes um, assignments that really are that prerequisite for a shot at those higher levels. And often this is due to a lack of powerful mentors and sponsors that really ensure that they get those stepping stone opportunities. So we know that people who are mentored are better prepared for promotions and have a higher success rate. They stay with their organizations longer and they feel more satisfied with their jobs and careers uh, and rate higher on performance measures. And ultimately they have a greater impact in their organizations and they're perceived as being more innovative, creative, and they have more resilience to setbacks and have much stronger networks. So we know that men tend to seek and offer mentoring more readily. Uh, women typically need to be encouraged and supported to find a mentor. Um, and of course, women are willing mentors. Um, we're, we're, uh, we're ready and willing to, um, to mentor others when we're asked, but perhaps we're simply not asking or seeking mentors out. So we hope that we'll inspire you today to get active around mentoring. So let me hand over to Pauline to take us through a bit more about mentoring. Thank you, Orla. Um, yeah, thank you for recapping. And I suppose let's start with, like, let's be really clear on what mentoring is. So um, some key things in the definitions here, but really, for us, we believe at LHH that mentoring isn't something that's done to the mentor mentee. 
but it really is a mutually shared process with responsibility on both sides very much a co-created alliance so key words here for me it's mutually beneficial mentor and mentee absolutely get something from it and it really helps the mentee to really get some clarity on identifying and achieving their goals from a mentor point of view mentors really are people who are quite altruistic they have as a core value the desire to make people's lives better so I'm interested to know, we're going to run a poll, who currently has a mentor? As Orla said, it's really, really, Amita, can you run the poll, please? So as Orla said, it's it's a really key thing. We regularly talk about, you know, the people that you need in your corner, and a mentor is a highly valuable person to have in your corner, to learn from, to, for them to help you get clarity. So let's see how we are doing on that poll. Interestingly, 63% of women have never had a mentor. Do I we think have... that's going to be pretty much reflected in this group today. Do we have the poll, Mida? Yeah, can you publish that? And we'll see. Okay, interest. Oh, wow. So so actually, you're, you're slightly more than, you know, what we see in the market. 63% of women have never had a mentor. So 30% of you have mentors. Brilliant. That's so nice to see. 68% don't. 3% don't know. Well, you're in the perfect place. So let's, you know, think about what a mentor is and also what you might do to actually set up a mentor relationship. Now, one of the areas of confusion that we see in many organizations and with many people is a mentor via sponsor. And it's very, very easy to confuse mentorship and sponsorship because for both, someone with more experience guides another professional. So typically they'll advise on career path. They can also focus on a specific activity or a specific interest. They'll both provide guidance. They'll help you grow your network. They will provide constructive criticism, which really is key when it's needed. Ultimately, a mentor has the knowledge and the experience to share. A key, key difference is a sponsor has the power and really will use it for you. So when I, you know, when I translate them in my head, mentorship, they're going to talk to you. It's a commitment. They're very committed to your development. For me, sponsorship is more of a responsibility. So they're going to talk about you and they're committed to really actively advocate for you. There is a TED talk, if anyone's interested by Carla Harris, and it's how to find the person that can help you get ahead at work. So I encourage you, especially if you're in the not sure, um, to think about that one. And moving on to the next slide, we have to acknowledge that mentorship and sponsorship aren't always either or. It's not about whether it's a full commitment or not. There's a spectrum of different types of relationship, different types of support. So Herminia Ibarra, who's an author and speaker, she talks about a mentor providing advice, support or coaching. A strategizer can share insider information about advancing and help you get ahead. Connector will make introductions to influential people and really talk you up to your peers. Opportunity giver will provide you with some high visible opportunities. And then an advocate, which really is sitting in the sponsorship place, will publicly advocate a promotion or fight for you in settings that you're not there to fight for yourself. And we have to point out that a mentor relationship very much can grow into a sponsor relationship, assuming that the mentor has a seat at the, deci at the decision table, that they also have exposure to your work and really can see the amazing stuff you do and that they have the power to influence. So when you have a mentor relationship, your mentor may or may not be a very good sponsor, but it's a conversation you need to have once you've built that relationship. If you have a good relationship and your mentor is in a position of power, but hasn't used the influence on your behalf, they probably would be open to sponsoring you. So it's definitely a conversation to have. So for those people who don't have a mentor, if we look at the benefits to the mentees, so very much providing a space and assistance for you to explore 
and address doubts, good ideas and comfort zones. They'll help you think about increasing your technical skills and you'll get to see their professional expertise. Very much mentorship can help with confidence and positive self-image. And a real benefit is that you have the talent and the ear of someone more experienced and hopefully more influential in the organization. They can provide assistance to help you to adapt, to challenge, to change. You know, they're sharing their experience and they'll help you provide opportunities or consider opportunities to explore your own potential and ideally opening of doors. So introducing you to other contacts, thinking about career opportunities. For me, you know, in mentoring, there's a lot of coach skills used and a mentor will really help you get out of your head. You know, those those um, things that we're saying to ourselves, holding ourselves back, a mentor can really provide the space to challenge. So as we said, it's, you know, co-created, it's mutually beneficial. And we're going to talk later on about actually, would you like to be a mentor? Because it isn't only that you could be a mentee, you very much could be a mentor. So the benefits to mentors, it's a space to share and reflect on your expertise and experience because we we rarely take that opportunity. As a mentor, you can get fresh perspective and new insights in areas of expertise and influence. And this is why reverse mentoring has had quite a boom. You know, it's really nice to hear someone else's perspective. Another benefit to the mentor is expand your organizational knowledge and network and hear other people's perspectives. It's also touching back to the altruistic piece. It's showing that you are a supportive leader and a valuable contributor in the organization. It will help you develop relationship skills and coaching skills. And ultimately you're giving something back. You're investing in the future of the organization. So especially for those of you that don't have mentors, how do you select your mentor? Because there's a whole organization out there. How would you think about who might be your mentor? So just start to think about what you might want from your mentor and who might be a good potential mentor for you. So here's some famous examples and really interesting. You know, when we first looked at this, some hadn't clicked that they were very clear mentors. Steve Jobs, interestingly, um, mentored Mark Zuckerberg. So Mark did post, Steve, thank you for being a mentor and a friend. Thank you for showing what you build can change the world. I will miss you. So he had a big, big impact on Mark Zuckerberg. Oprah Winfrey was mentored by Maya Angelou. So Oprah said she was there for me always, guiding me through some of the most important years of my life. She said mentors are important and I don't think anyone makes it in the world without some form of mentorship. Christian Dior and Yves Saint Laurent. So Yves Saint Laurent became Christian Dior's personal assistant and really learned the secret of haute couture and how to run a company. And he said, Dior fascinated me. I couldn't speak in front of him. He taught me the basis of my art, whatever was to happen next. I never forgot the years I spent at his side. Again, a lovely testimonial. And Barack Obama, really interestingly, we all know Michelle Robinson. So Michelle, obviously known now as Michelle Obama, she was designated as Barack's mentor at the law firm when he was a summer associate. So he often credits Michelle today as being the support and success behind his great achievements. So thinking about then what to look for in a mentor. And I have to say chemistry, chemistry, chemistry. It really is all about the relationship. Then, you know, to simplify it, and we love the three um, the, the three circles to really pin down what you to look for in a mentor. So firstly is trust. So it's the contract between you and your mentor, because ideally you'll be telling your mentor things in confidence. So trust is key. It's so, so important. And the trust needs to go both ways because the relationship will be most successful when they trust you as well. So if we can really build on this mutual trust to get the most out of the relationship, and also seek out a mentor who's going to challenge you to improve and isn't afraid to ask the tough questions. And we need to have that trust and relationship there to ask the tough questions, deliver real feedback, so both positive and constructive. And that's the mentor who's going to help you achieve your goals and help you succeed. Another one is contrast. 
So the mentor, your mentor ideally will help you step outside your comfort zone. So I think your mentor should be a bit outside your comfort zone. You don't want a buddy or a clone of yourself because you're going to stay in the same thinking patterns. Really, you need diversity to make sure you're getting a really different perspective on things. So again, don't be afraid to have a mentor who's younger than you, looks different to you, has a different style, thinks differently, and isn't necessarily the same gender. Oh, I was just going to pick up on that, Pauline, because someone's popped that in the Q&A about uh, gender, whether women should have the same gender mentor or not. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. And actually, I'm interested in your thought. I suppose responding in the moment, I think that sometimes it can be useful to have a woman, you know, same lived experience. But actually, sometimes it can be useful to have a man because they're going to see things from a different perspective. But ultimately, it comes down to the chemistry. Everything is down on that trust. What are your yeah. thoughts, Orla? Uh, I would just say, uh, and I know you'll come on to it in a minute, it's what you want to get out of the mentoring. So once you're clear about what you want to um, achieve from the mentoring, then I think it becomes clear um, who that person might be for you. And as you said, you know, those are some examples that, that might be part of your objective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Orla said being clear on what you want to get from the mentoring, but also... It's not about finding the mentor with the most years of experience or the biggest title. It's about finding the mentor with the knowledge and expertise to help you on your journey. Someone said, agree with chemistry and trust. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. So, so important. So you do want a mentor with enough experience to help you navigate through the challenges you're facing. But actually, it doesn't mean it's the person with the most years of work on their CV. If the mentor has been in a similar situation to you and has worked their way through it then actually it's their experience and expertise that's powerful not so much their title or their years in the workforce and we're going to Kirsten especially is going to share some of her experience of different mentors um later Kirsten immediate reaction to that man or woman question any thoughts I've been mentored by both interestingly and very very different reasons behind why and what I was looking for and interestingly what I wanted from the male mentor was how do I get over my fear of networking and of course you get the very blunt just go and do it you're like, oh, that easy okay fine. okay fine and actually that was really helpful and then when when I've had female mentors it's been more about it's actually been a lot more strategic and a lot more how do we get you how do we advance you within the organization so one that was very tactical very you know quite skill based and one that that clearly wasn't yeah so it's an interesting mix yeah yeah thank you and i suppose that emphasizes orla's point doesn't it it's about Mm -hmm. what you want to get so then on that topic things to consider when you're looking at identifying a potential mentor so think about your strengths that you currently hold and are aware of? What are your major needs? And also be really clear, what are the most important things the mentor can help you with? So specific things to consider, short-term job objectives, your long-term career goals, and what do you want from this mentoring experience? So it's good also to be clear on, you know, what the mentor wants to get from the relationship, because it is a relationship. And like every other relationship in our job, it's it's not in our job, in our lives, it's a two-way deal. Be, consider what you can expect to contribute to the mentoring process, how can the mentor help you, and also how you'll know if the mentoring is working or not working. We're going to touch on that later, because actually, it's for both of you in that partnership to consider whether or not the relationship is working. Any any um, immediate thoughts? I know we're going to share experience later, but Orla or Kirsten, top two things, what did you consider when choosing mentors? For me, well, um, I've thought about this in terms of external and internal mentors. So sometimes mm-hmm. we say, so I'm thinking external outside of the organisation. I wanted someone who was um, a thought leader, who would bring their freshest thinking and who would really challenge me. So I looked for someone outside of the organisation for that. Um, and then for an internal mentor, um, I wanted someone who was connected across the business 
um, and who was in a position to know the politics, the mood, what was going on, what was coming over the horizon. So really get me access to more of that information so that that would guide my thinking and my strategy. So those were the things that I thought about in terms of two different types of mentors. Yeah. And I'm about to start a new mentoring relationship in a few weeks time where actually what I've wanted and what I've looked for in a mentor very specifically was someone who's had not necessarily a similar career path to me, but who's managing perhaps a barrette, who's juggling a lot of balls, essentially, and who can really help me with with my juggle. Um, and I'm very excited, actually, about the person who I've been paired with, which I've seen, happens to be a woman, but I've seen her speak uh, at a Elevating Women in Leadership programme and was really taken with her story and actually inspired by her story so I'm very confident I'm going to learn a lot from her mistakes and her successes thank you thank you Kristen Oh, so shall I cover this then, Pauline? Yeah. Yes. So, um, so we just thought we we put in this slide, get you thinking about um, um, what might get in the way of approaching a mentor. So we hear from women that we work with some of the things um, that get in the way, and here are just a few. If you can think of any others, pop them in the chat. But um, a lack of time, so busy doing, and we don't take time for ourselves and don't actually think about this. Uh, a fear of being uh, knocked back, especially if we're approaching someone more um, senior. So just really think about what, you know, what's the worst that can happen? They they say no, but usually what we find is this, that they say, no, I'm really busy, but I can think of someone who'd be a really good match for you or let me, you know, put you in touch with someone else. So it's getting over that fear of being knocked back. Or it might be, um, a lack of comfort with talking about yourself and asking for what you want. It might feel a bit or inauthentic to ask. So you might want to reframe that um, and start thinking about it in terms of looking for advice or um, you wanting to develop um, rather than it being something that you're asking specifically to, to, for, for help, um, but actually valuing their advice and their development. Perhaps um, a lack of confidence to reach out, you know, that that's OK. It's OK not to be confident about that, but ask for help. Maybe ask someone to introduce you or perhaps look and see if you have uh, mentoring schemes that will take that aspect away from you and there'll be a matching process. And as I say, anything else that you can think of that comes up around uh, that gets in the way of you actually uh, approaching a mentor. And, you know, I recognise it can feel awkward to say, you know, will you be my mentor? Will you sponsor me when you don't know someone very well? Um, and potentially a mentor might hesitate or decline to commit if they're unclear about what you expect from them. So it's helpful to have a specific request or, as Pauline was saying, a clear connection first. And, you know, Find out if your organisation has a formal mentoring or sponsoring programme. Maybe talk to your HR business partner about your goals and what support HR can offer, offer you. And maybe they could connect you to someone directly or steer you in the right direction. And if yeah. you have your... Sorry? Okay, I was going to pop in yeah. what's in the chat, but you can carry on. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just finish this bit. Yeah. And, and then if you if you've got your eye on someone who you who you um, want to mentor you, um, as Pauline said, try and build that connection before you asked. So um, get in touch. Um, if you've connected in a positive way in the past, how could you reconnect? Um, and if you, you know, imagine that you, you know, see perhaps a manager who clearly advocates for their team. Uh, they try to pursue projects and opportunities that allow you to more, work more closely with them. Look for those opportunities to try and, um, you know, work with them, uh, find projects or join things or get connected to them. Uh, and you can, you know, just reach out, you know, reach out to people you could perhaps uh, reach out with an update that might be relevant to their objectives. So if you've if you've recently completed a project or something that you think might be useful, um, you could explain that and just add, I'd love to share more detail and explore some options of where we might go from here. Would you be willing to talk to me about that? 
Or you could just make a specific request. I'm trying to do this. Would you be prepared to share some advice um, and build on the experience that I need? So as I say, don't be afraid to ask, you know, go ahead, get that meeting in the calendar. I'm sure you can do it. We've put some tips on the worksheet for you. Um, but Pauline, did you say there was something in the chat? that? A few, around... Yeah, a few things in the chat. So people highlighted fear of rejection, fear of showing vulnerability, lack of commitment, following through with actions, not knowing what you're wanting to be mentored on. Obviously, that's. Yeah. Yeah. So and all of those start, start with doing a bit of thinking yourself around what you want to get, having a bit of a plan, being really clear about what you're going to ask for and what the time commitment you're looking for. So if you can be upfront about all of those, it makes it easier for that person that you're asking to consider, well, actually, could I commit to that? Um, so think about all of these different things when you're um, approaching someone so that they've got all of the information about what you actually uh, want from them. From the chat, someone said, my boss thinks um, they're my mentor. Ideally, your mentor is someone who's not your boss. Yeah. Um, and I would I would say to them, Alison, best practice is your mentor is not your boss. So that's a very clean, you know, I, someone else should mentor you. You could ask your, I mean, particularly if you have a good relationship with your boss and they know you well, you could ask them if they've got someone in their network who they feel would be a good mentor for you. So that's a great thing that they could do to, to um, help you. Cool. Any more questions at this stage? We can pick those up a bit later. OK, let's move on. Pauline, I think you were going to talk about the actual mentor relationship. Absolutely. And there were some questions about, you know, lack of follow through or I see a question there. Should there be a structured framework? So, yes, there, there should be a framework. And once you've selected who you want to mentor, I think a few key things to know is one, as who you want to be your mentor, as the mentee, it's really important for you to drive the relationship but let's just look at critical success factors for mentoring. So the outcome will really depend on the quality of the relationship. And for successful relationships, it's good for both the mentor and the mentee to be really clear on the benefits of being a mentor and mentee. Time commitment is a big one. So mentors, mentees need to be able to take the time out from their day to day to focus on the relationship. Mentees really need to understand that they're responsible and they need to drive it. So that question about lack of, of follow through, definitely, if you're the mentee, it's down to you. You do need to drive it. So planning and structure, and we'll, we'll talk you through some pointers, but it's ideal to co-create a relationship agenda and regularly review to make sure you're both getting something from it. Conflicts of interest need to identify and address conflicts of interest because trust is key. And if someone has some concerns, that's going to impact your trust. And then finally, confidentiality. It's really important. It should be a confidential space. So that way you and the mentor really can be honest and be vulnerable. So when we look at contracting or mentoring relationships, so there's three P's to look at in contracting. And as the mentee, the mentee should drive this. So the first P is processes. So it's the housekeeping piece. Where are you going to meet? How often you're going to meet? How you can handle rescheduling? So what if someone has an urgent clash? You know, how will that be handled? And also preferred methods of communication and how you schedule. So can you directly diarize with your mentor or do you go through someone else? It's really good just to talk about these and be clear on them up front. The second is the professional piece. So firstly, and we'll keep on talking about it, what I talked about, you know, being clear on what you want from the mentoring. So you can't go into it a little unsure, waiting for the mentor to drive you. So being really clear on your aspirations and the desired outcomes of the mentoring relationship. Other things to you know, surface to put on the table and discuss is confidentiality and conflicts of interest. And then finally, it's really good for both of you to surface, to share what you each want from the mentoring, how you like to give feedback, 
how you like to receive feedback, and also what do you need to know about each other to really elevate this relationship and move forward. So some examples from the contracting. So, and this could make up your framework. So this could be in a, doc, a contracting document at your first meeting. So when and where you'll meet, best way to stay in touch, who is responsible for setting up the meetings and how long you agree to work together. So whether that's six months or a year, but you know, having a clear boundary is really important. So what both of you want to get the rate from the relationship from a professional point of view, what can you do to make the meetings as successful as possible? So that would include potentially, you know, updates in between meetings or prep for the meetings or you driving the agenda and also what might get in the way or what concerns or niggles are you holding in your head for the mentoring relationship? And then finally, from a personal point of view, to build that relationship, what's helpful to share about yourself, how best you can give feedback and what you would each like to get personally from the mentoring. And we've put this on the worksheet for everyone. So they've got this these points as an example to, to use. Thank you. So some top tips for mentoring. And, you know, if you're the mentee, the greatest compliment to your mentor is to make use of their experience and wisdom. So don't be afraid to ask for a reasonable amount of their time to draw on the experience. And that will really build a trusting relationship. And linked to that, really do prepare for your mentoring sessions. Think about how to make the most of the opportunity. Listen with an open mind and really be prepared to be challenged and be prepared to challenge the mentor constructively. Listen to their views, but make up your own mind about what to do, because ultimately this is your life, this is your career, and you have to take ownership for it. Keep reviewing your long-term professional goals because things might change both personally and in the organization. So it's good to do a regular check-in on that and be prepared to drive and handle most of the management of the relationship. Confidentiality works both ways. So make sure to keep confidential all the information your mentor shares. And it's really useful to keep notes or a journal of your discussions and to build in some reflection time and think about at the end of each session, reflect, write down some notes. And then when you're prepping for the next session, revisit that. Make sure that you have followed through on all commitments and bring fresh again all the new learnings from your sessions. So for you as a next step, and I know people reference this in the comments, but do find out if your organization has an internal mentoring scheme. Maybe ask around for mentor recommendations. Really be clear, reflect, spend time to think about what you want from a mentor. Look around the organization and speak to others about potential mentors to approach. So it's so much easier to get an introduction because sometimes we can be uncomfortable going in cold and asking for someone to be our mentor and also be brave. Go take the first step, reach out. So we focus very much on you as a mentee, but actually as, we, as we've seen, there's benefits to being a mentee and a mentor. So I'm wondering, would you like to be a mentor? And what's holding you back? I think we're gonna do a poll. Would you like to be a mentor? Yes, perfect. So think about if you would like to be a mentor and also who you might mentor. So would you like to be a mentor? 64% would, that's wonderful. That's so nice to see. It's definitely giving something back, isn't it? It's, it's helping others, but also it's a really good opportunity to reflect and share your learnings and your journey. 6% say no, absolutely. And it's good to be clear if you don't want to be a mentor, it's good to acknowledge that and not enter into a relationship where you're not going to give your all. And then 30% are on a maybe. Fair enough. So thinking about being a mentor. So do check in with yourself before you become a mentor and before you accept a mentee. 
you know, think about if you have the right skills or would you potentially be run ragged finding the answers? So consider what you can offer someone. How do you visualize mentoring someone? What do you want from the experience? And think about the mentoring experiences you've had so far, what have been helpful and what haven't been helpful to you. Think about your biggest lessons. So what career experiences have helped you? What have you learned from them? And how benef relevant or beneficial will these experiences and professional learning be to a mentee? And a question that is always asked is, how will I know when the mentoring is working or not working? Because if it's not working, you are allowed to say that you're not the right person. Also, you're allowed to say that it's not the right time. You have too much on your plate. So I think if a mentoring relationship is struggling, definitely don't, don't waste your time and their time with kind of like a half-hearted, less connected mentorship. Do say, not right now, or maybe this is not the right match and I can help you. And one way to sense check on whether or not a mentoring relationship is working is take a relationship temper check. So three things that are really important is respect. So it's key that you have a mutual appreciation of each other's knowledge, skills, commitment, and energy. And I think this is important both as a mentor and a mentee. It's really good to regularly check in and see how the relationship is. So consider responsiveness. So how well you collaborate, how sensitive you are and responsive to each other's goals, to each other's perspectives, to each other's needs. And then finally, accountability. So a mentor and mentee relationship is driven by the mentee, but you're both accountable. You both make commitments and you both need to keep to your agreement. So is the relationship focused? Is it productive? Is it trusting? And I suppose I have to acknowledge that not all mentoring will end with a sense of satisfaction. Sometimes, you know, someone doesn't achieve their goals or sometimes you just don't gel and that's fine. So I would encourage you to resist the urge to try and fix something. As I said, be gracious and say, sorry, I think, you know, we've come to the end of what I can offer or maybe what I'm getting from this relationship if you're the mentee. And offer to support the mentor or mentee in finding what they now may be looking for for the next stage of your their career. So a few things that I think are important in a mentoring relationship is, you know, be really clear that you have a no fault exit strategy because sometimes the relationship won't work and that's nobody's fault. That's life. So be respectful and be open and honest with each other. Also, if the relationship isn't working, you know, take it as an opportunity to reflect on what's not working and learn for future relationships. So consider what worked, what didn't work. And a key thing is if a mentor or mentee relationship, so if you're a mentor or mentee, if that relationship has not really worked and you're going to part ways, the one thing I would say is that's one relationship. So don't give up mentoring. So much to be gained as a mentor and a mentee. And we talked about chemistry, chemistry, chemistry. So I would encourage you always to jump on to the next opportunity and build chemistry there. Brilliant. Thank you, Pauline. So I think we're going to do a bit of experience sharing. So it'd be lovely to go to you, Kirsten, now and um, just hear from, I'm going to stop sharing so that we can be on the screen and just share some of your experiences, because I know you, you've you tantalised us with some of your uh, thoughts around you're getting a new mentor. So what does that all mean for you at the moment? So I was, I was thinking, actually, Pauline, you were talking, I was scribbling down some names I suppose of people who I won't reveal but I realized that there is somebody who's actually been very pivotal as a mentor who I kind of shockingly missed off my list happens to be happens to be a man um used to be my boss promoted me into roles um and then he moved to the sideways move and because he has done my job in the past he was so helpful when I was having 
not quite a wobble, but when I just like, oh, I really need to talk to somebody who understands what I do, how I do it, but kind of isn't in the day to day. And actually, he he was very important in again helping me see things from a different different perspective, but also learning from his experience. So that was that was that was him. Um, and then I think the, for me, the really really key one that helped me into a leadership role was being mentored by a very senior executive within our business. Um, and actually, it was understanding and having some face time with her that helped me understand, you know, when I'm thinking strategically, when I'm talking strategically, what does that look like? And I had very specific questions that I would go to each of those sessions with that I would, you know, I'd say, hit hey, this, I don't know, monthly question, what, you know, this is an experience I'm currently having. What's your, what's been your experience of it? And it's been so, it was so helpful to to hear that, it wasn't the first time someone had been through this. Here were some top tips, therefore, for how to work it through. And again, it was, it, I mean, really, it was life-changingly good, that mentoring. So that's me as a mentee. I've also mentored. So I'm not mentoring at the moment. So thank you very much for the nudge. I need to go and, I need to go and do it. Um, and actually, from a mentor perspective, I mentored somebody from LHH, but within a different country. So we're a global organization. So we got we got paired that way. And actually, I had a very firm contract with this individual. There were three key things that she really, really wanted to achieve within, I think it was about a six-month window. And we were very uh what's the word? We were very on the point on point in terms of what we were we going to talk about in each session and then she had follow-ups to go and do and then she'd bring back the results the next time we met and the difference in her from the first meeting to the last was was huge actually it was really really huge so if you're on the fence I'd say jump off it because it it was such, I found it such a rewarding experience and again it's what can you give what can you get um and I think from both both ways it's you know, the value of someone else's experience when you're walking that path is is huge. So definitely, definitely worth taking advantage of. Brilliant. Thanks, Kirsten. Yeah, and um, I'll add to that just a, a couple of points for, for me around. I've used mentors at different times in my career. So going back to, you know, thinking about what you want to get from it, whether it's developing my strategic thinking or keeping up to date on the latest thinking, developing my financial acumen or reviewing my career plan. So I've had different, I've used mentors for different things at different times, sometimes long-term, sometimes short-term. And the other thing I would say is um, you don't just have to have one mentor. So you might have two or three at a particular time. Um, so it's not just one at a time. You can you can have, um, have more than one if that's what you need at, at that particular point. Um, and then as a mentor myself, um, I think for me, one, especially when you're mentoring women, it's important to reflect on our own motives and biases. So as a mentor, just keep reflecting on your own leadership stereotypes and any gender biases um, so that you don't bring those into that sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. So. I'm very conscious when I'm mentoring, particularly early career women. Um, I'm very aware of um, not being too pushy. I'm obviously passionate about helping women to progress, uh, but it's not my career journey. So mm -hmm. being aware of that. Um, and I really just focus on, as Kirsten was saying, offering support. So sharing my knowledge and expertise really actively listening. So again, it's not my agenda, but really listening to what that person wants to get and really paying attention to that. Um, trying to um, be self-confident myself. So setting a, a positive um, example, but also balanced with being open and vulnerable. So I'm happy to share when I find things difficult um, and the things that I struggle with um, as part of, of that um, building trust and uh, together. Um, and then obviously the last one is being a good connector. So sharing your connections and your network. So those are the things that I focus on as a mentor. Pauline, what about for you? 
So I think I have been mentored and I have been a mentor. So I think, um, yes, I've been mentored. And for me, the biggest benefit was, um, you know, getting out of my head, sharing the things I was struggling with that you don't really want to vocalize. But in a mentoring relationship, it is a safe space. It's very confidential. So you can say, I don't know if I can do this or I'm not sure actually if I want to, you know, do this commitment. And that's a really good space to be challenged because you know that the mentor has your best interests at heart. Because actually, well, as you say, it's key. It's not their journey, it's your journey. So they're not pushing you to be a mini them. They're pushing you to be the best you can be. And then as a mentor, so I've mentored men and women. And I think what um, I've gotten a lot from it in that it, it raises my perspective because obviously we don't, we only have our own lived experience. We don't know what other people are are struggled with. And something that might seem so straight to us is not to someone else. Mm. So I think I've definitely grown a lot through mentoring and then, um, yeah, being mentored, it's it's not someone else that is in your corner, is pushing you forward, but doesn't, um, you know, they kind of have skin in the game, but they don't have skin in the game because it's your career. So ultimately, you need to do it. And I think that for me is what's so unique about it. Yeah. Thank you, Pauline. Yeah, I think that's the key message about, um, you know, driving that yourself and really um, thinking about it. So I hope we've given you lots of points. Uh, Mida, if you could run the poll, we'll, we'll, we're going to stay on and answer any questions. If you've got some more questions, um, pop those in the chat and I'll just I can see there's one in the Q&A. So I'll just have a look at that at the moment. But we'd love to know how you have you found this session. And obviously, um, we encourage you to pull your thinking together from today. We've given a, a worksheet, but just reflect on how mentoring might help you. Who could you choose as a mentor? How to get the best out of that mentoring relationship? And consider whether you could be a mentor yourself and offer, as I say, um, it's really good. Maybe you could look around, spot um, someone in your team, a woman around you in your team, and just ask if they would like to be uh, mentored. So um, offering that support and encouragement. Someone's put, should there be a structured framework around the mentoring? And I think, um, I think you know, the, the three Ps, that, is, that gives a framework. Um, and I think a key thing is you as a mentee, if you're the mentee, you're driving it. If you're the mentor, get yeah. the mentee to drive it. I I would add, you know, as we're um, finishing it, you know, having a mentor is from a return on investment. You know, the investment in your time, you get the returns magnified. It's um, so impactful to have someone there to challenge, to share their expertise, to share their journey. So I really would encourage everyone to to do it. Um, so I'm just looking through the chat and someone's popped in the chat. What if mentoring is new to both of you? Have we got any tips if if both parties are new to mentoring? So I, I think if you're both new to mentoring, use the framework that we've given. Um, and also, I would encourage you to have a very open um, first meeting, which is kind of like a chemistry check. And both of you share, you know, what you want from it to make sure you're aligned. Because if you both view mentoring as something different, then it's going to be less successful. And going back to our definition, it's a co-created process. Um, it, it's going to work for both of you. So I think if you're both new to it, just being really honest. And it's a good start to build the trust and vulnerability. Yeah. And someone's popped in the chat as well about having that discussion about what mentoring is and isn't. Because you might have different expectations around what that means so always a good conversation to be having very much and being aware that sponsorship is different to mentorship perfect so I hope we've given you plenty of food for thought on mentoring and that you're inspired to um, go out and either mentor others or um, look around and find your own mentor for yourself. As Pauline and Kirsten have shared, it can be a fantastic benefit um, and really support and help you in your development going forward. So happy mentoring, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, in these sessions. It's the last of this um, group of sessions, but look out for more, obviously, from LHH throughout the year. Uh, and we'll be back early next year with some more Women in Leadership sessions for you.
So thank you for joining us and thank you, Pauline, Kirsten and Mida for running these sessions.